celebrating 16 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Marcus Hall, Part 2. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. Boy, if, if you didn't see episode one or part one of this interview with uh, Marcus Hall, go back and watch that. It sets you up for today, which is part two, and it is a story of possibility. He was on this set before, and we talked about his life and his story. We got part of it there. And then after we had that show, uh, a little while later, you ended up getting convicted of running an illegal gambling operation and going to jail. And, prison. Uh, prison. Prison. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me get that right. This is not no, Otis going no, and letting no, himself no, in. Right. It's not the Andy this Griffith not show that, at all. Right. It's like, I, yes, so, I check so, in. So welcome back to the broadcast, and I, and I truly appreciate you being here today. Um, so you get you get the word that you are going to prison. I mean, you, you hired lawyers, you're going through money. How much money had you saved? I basically, stocks, uh, they took properties, they took, I mean, basically every property I have. The only thing they left me with was the one that I'm actually, uh, was fortunate enough to, uh, them, for them to allow me to continue running the business. Do you know what your net worth was at the time? I, <laughs> <laughs> I had a few million dollars, Al. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're a multimillionaire, and you were set, and then all of a sudden in one sweep. Everything. Gone. Gone. And you defined yourself by your wealth. Like yes, material exactly things, right. success. You're absolutely right. That's yes. who you were. That's exactly right. It, it's part of what gave you your swagger, because you knew, like, you have no idea. Right. You on. think... I got way more than you would ever imagine. Right you on. don't even know I'm getting it. Yes. Right. Yes. So yes. there's that part of that swagger. You can yeah. be in Knoxville today, but you can be in LA tomorrow balling out. The freedom of being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Yes, I did. I had that. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. They take, took that all away. Take me to the courtroom and the verdict and the sentencing. Even up until the day that I was sentenced, I still had this bulletproof, I, you know, I may have the opportunity to get away with this uh, attitude. And uh, until the judge, two things happened. One is I was, I was grounded pretty fast again. Um, and it was reality. Um, when the judge called out 33 months, actually the prosecutor was uh, attempting or she wanted to, me to get close to 60 months. Um, and so the judge uh, came out and, and said 33 months. Uh, at the time, and um, I didn't understand what she'd done, but she had pretty much made in her mind, I would assume, uh, that uh, what she was going to do. Uh, when she sentenced me to the 33 months, she then also uh, suggested to the court that I go to a program called RDAP. And so what RDAP was, it's a, it's a drug uh, treatment program in the federal prison systems, and it's uh, based off of a cognitive uh, behavior therapy. Behavior yeah, therapy. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, again, uh, I didn't get that until after I got with my attorneys immediately after the sentencing, and we and I go, what just happened? Um, we were talking maybe no sent, you know, no jail time or no prison time at the worst case scenario, 12 months, and I just got sentenced to 33 months. There's no way my business is gonna survive. And uh, I had just had a, a, a little girl uh, at, that, at this time. I, my daughter was born uh, February uh, 62nd, daughter that is. And so, you know, I'm, wow, what, what's gonna happen here? How does this, how does this work? Uh, and then they explained to me by her suggesting and recommending the RDAP program that that would take 12 months off the 33 months. Uh, and then um, at the time in federal prisons, they were giving six months of halfway house. Uh, so the 33 months actually turned into right at close to, to a year. Uh, I ended up serving 13 months in, in federal prison. Uh, I want to take a break because I want to talk about you ending up going to federal prison. Right. Uh, once again, you had a plan in mind, right. and it didn't go according to you your plan. Right on. Wait until you hear this. This is Anything is Possible. 
Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. Do you say anything to God through all of this? No, not a word. Do you end up going to federal prison? Do you remember the day you showed up, how they transported you, what you wore? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough uh, to be able to self-surrender. Uh, and so uh, I was uh, sentenced to, again, 33 months. Uh, and the camp that they uh, decided that I would go to was in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, and so, yeah, I remember that day we were, I was due to turn myself in July 13th by two o'clock. And, uh, and so we drove down the night before and, uh, and and my oldest daughter, who is at this time uh, 14 years old or so, she wanted to go. Well, the, I didn't want my oldest daughter, because I didn't know what to expect, um, to go. I didn't want her to see me going into this environment and that her, for, to be the vision that she had. Uh, and this was the, one of the very few times in my life, uh, me knowing my oldest daughter, that uh, she cried. She cried on, she, damn, excuse me. Yeah, she cried, she cried on the phone and she said, Daddy, I want to go. So uh, we, uh, we drove down through Atlanta and we picked up my oldest daughter and um, we, uh, and, and she went with us, she went with us. We spent the night in Montgomery and uh, she went meet with me um, um, to turn myself in. And so it was me and uh, my youngest daughter and her mother, Marty. Uh, and we, we got there at uh, about 1.50 uh, in Montgomery. And uh, that, was, that was one of the very few times uh, I cried. I mean, it was, it was one of the toughest things I ever had to do. You walk through those gates, they're looking at you, you're looking at them. You get inside and there you have it. Who knows, what, you know, where are we going from here? So at that time, I didn't know what to expect. Um, Do you say anything to God through all of this? No, not a word. I, it, it, again, at, at, there was a point where I said, I mean, I didn't need God at this time. You know, I had it all together. I mean, I was doing this by myself. Um, and, and I, I believe a little bit of that was, you know, I, I know this wasn't God's plan, you know, this wasn't the way he wanted me to succeed, you know, this wasn't success in his eyes. I knew, you know, obviously I was breaking the law and doing something wrong. And, uh, and so, no, I didn't. You get to the camp, um, and I use this word loosely, but you're blessed to be at the camp. At the camp. That and was you see a yeah. tennis court. Yeah. Because <laughs> you like to play tennis. Yep. And you're thinking, I got to put my spin on this. You got it. Right? Yeah. yeah. I may be able to get this down to a year, a little more than a year. I'm just going to play tennis, get this over with. Get this over with. It's, it's going to be all right, with the exception of wearing green every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, again, once I got there and saw what it was, it was uh, it's a prison camp. Uh, there weren't really, there were no bars. Uh, at a certain security level, you know, um, and if you're not a violent criminal, that you you can get to a camp. Uh, and so, as far as prison was concerned, you know, I was like, wow, okay, I, I've been very fortunate. And they had tennis courts, and so I said, I'll spend the next, you know, 12 months or whatever this is, working on my tennis game. And literally, uh, I was there. I had been there two days, maybe three. Uh, and got on the tennis court, and within 10 minutes of playing tennis, I tore my Achilles. I'm like, whoa. Now, now, at this point... Now I'm, you're rock I'm, bottom. I'm rock bottom. I'm in a prison with all men and, and where I don't really know anyone, and, and you can't get around. And, and so, I'm, at this point, I, at night, I'm laying in my bed, and I'm going, okay. If somebody wants to run up on me, I, That's when I had my, my talk with God. And how did that go? Uh, he basically, you know, kind of 
straight me then. I, I said, what, God, okay, now I'm listening. You know, I, again, I, I, there was a point where I was questioning, is God real, is there a God, or whatever the case may be, and uh, I got this on my own. I don't need God in my life. I, I'm doing this. Uh, but that was when I actually asked God, okay, I'm listening. What, what, what is it that you're on? And I, and I basically had an argument with God, and I told him I didn't need him. And, and I did this by myself, and I did this by myself. And as, as I told you before, the numerous amount of times that I've been robbed, or the one time I've been robbed and attempted robbery, I mean, it, it was, my life, yeah, again, was crazy, wide open. And, and he basically said, you would be dead if it were not for me. He said, I, you, don't, you don't even know how many times I've saved your life. And you think you got here uh, by yourself, you would be dead. And I reflected back on, on, on my life over the last, you know, seven or 10 years or so and, and just and where I am now. And, and he also said, you don't need that. What, what, why would you think you needed to do illegal anything to get to a point of success? Uh, and, and what is success? And what is your definition what is of success, success now? Yeah, what do you, and that's what he asked me. And so still, uh, at that time, like we said, cars and money and clothes and traveling and that lifestyle. And, and, and now my de definition of success, and, and we, uh, we'll, we'll get to the shine thing again. Remember us going over shine? Um, is finding happiness in your own skin. Uh, I, I, believe, I do know for a fact that there's a point in time in my life that I was ashamed of my upbringings, you know what I mean? I wanted to be something and somebody that I wasn't. I didn't want to talk about the struggle uh, that I'd been through uh, and, and look at me, you know, this is a, and so it's funny now I'm more ashamed of the person I was attempting to be mm -hmm. and, and, and how I was getting that, uh, that money, that fast money and, and, and so, uh, Success is your children being able to look at you and going, Dad, I'm proud of you, and you leaving a legacy for them. Success is waking up and seeing my beautiful daughter uh, smile and, and, and run around with her crazy little hair and, and, and being able to be a part of her life on a daily basis and making sure that she takes the right direction. Success is being able to go to my oldest daughter's basketball game um, and being able to call her when I want to and, and her call me and, and talk to me about what she's struggling with and whether she's having a good day or a bad diet day and, and having a direct effect on that and, and being with my family. Um, we're gonna take a break when we come back. <clears throat> Marcus Hall then, that was, we unpacked a lot today. Right on. Let's talk about Marcus Hall now and the one you see in the future. Um, what, what you learned and, and the man that you want to be now, right? I, I want to want to talk about that transformation and how courageous it is and how you feel just telling the truth. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is Anything Is Possible. Coming up. All the damage that I did and, and all the negative energy that I put out the only way I can think of to make it up is to uh, do something positive. Whoa. Um, yeah, you were, you were mentioning, you didn't expect to feel the things that you were feeling, but I think part of the reason you felt some of the things you felt on the show today is you're becoming, with, you're becoming familiar with a whole new part of you because the person you were could not be clouded by emotion. Right on. Right, emotion yeah, was the, you know, Good, bad, or otherwise, you had to kind of stay the row. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because uh, again, you're around people that if they, if you're weak, they got you. Yeah, that's it. They're, you know, they're gonna eat you up. So thank you for, for the vulnerability today. Why, why now do you want to tell truth? Because because today you did something pretty courageous. This community really embraced you. There were people who were really disappointed, right? You've come back, but you came back home. You could have figured out, I'm gonna go live somewhere else. Right and, but you came back home and you faced a lot of the people and you've, you've said you're sorry and you're saying, 
Well, I don't want to be that guy. Um, first, how does it feel to just tell the truth? And how, how, how does this journey feel to you now? Because I know it's pretty fresh. Uh, it is, um, again, that, that process of, uh, I, I didn't, I initially looked at uh, going to that RDAP program, and it's so funny, I keep reflecting back on the RDAP program, but that was the change. And it wasn't immediate, it was a process. And that's one of the sayings they say in RDAP. Uh, but um, getting out of jail early, that was the initial goal. But through that process, uh, we just had these discussions, these hard discussions, and initially, uh, the question was asked, did you have any victims in your crime? And of course, I was like, no, it's gambling. People gamble because they want to gamble. And, and then you go through this uh, process where you realize, and, and being honest first with yourself, um, my family were victims. My daughter, my oldest daughter's mother, again, we were robbed at gunpoint. I mean, I can only imagine what she felt like that after that, and I continue to do uh, what I wanted to do, what I, you know, wanted the quick way to make money, the easy, take the easy route. Uh, and like you said earlier, um, the trust of the community. I had the mayor, the city of Knoxville, the, you know, boards that I served on, none of these people knew what I was doing and they had faith in me. And so um, I let them down, uh, period. Uh, from a selfish standpoint, uh, I think, wow, how do you get past that? Um, and other than apologizing. Uh, and so fast forwarding to this day and time now, I realize how, um, how, how huge of a you know, letdown I was to my community. And uh, yeah, I wanna make amends for that. And so moving forward in the future, all the damage that I did and, and all the negative energy that I put out the only way I can think of to make it up is to uh, do something positive. Uh, we, we talked about, um, you said you want to help people understand. Don't, don't go that way. That's exactly right. Go this way. Right. And the acrostic shine. He said, I, I want to shine right in on. a different way. Yeah. What does shine stand for? Shine, S, again, substance not being this materialistic person that you're full of just what people want you to be, but actually having some, some base, uh, something good in you. Uh, what do you stand for? Uh, happiness, uh, finding happiness in other things besides material things, uh, what the world wants you to be, being an individual. Uh, I'm not gonna follow the crowd, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna do because this guy's doing it, that guy's selling drugs, or this guy, that looks to be the right thing. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna be my own individual and, and do the right thing. Uh, and also integrity. Uh, you know, doing the right thing even when somebody's not watching. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, and learning how to say no, that's one of the biggest, the biggest downfalls of a, me and becoming a man. Uh, in my life, I had separate, several opportunities to say no, but I didn't because of peer pressure, the negativity of, of whatever the case may be. Uh, and uh, worried about what someone was gonna think about me or say, say about me. Uh, but uh, being able to say no is, is so, I can't put enough uh, weight on as a man. Learning to be a man is the, the biggest part of that is being able to say no because it's, it's just, the, too easy to say yes sometimes. You just take the easy route and say yes. So being able to say no. So uh, S-H-I-N and then E, which you really want to be excellent and exceptional. Exceptional. And, and you don't have to do something bad to create something good. You got it. Um, again, me being able to go to uh, young black men and talk to them about uh, being excellent uh, and um, not following that uh, negative peer pressure and, and selling drugs or, or being a number man or whatever the case may be, but uh, using some delayed gratification. And what that means is I'm gonna pay my dues to get to where I wanna be in life and be able to keep all the rewards from that and not going with this immediate gratification uh, where eventually you either go to jail, uh, lose it all and, and the potential of death. Thank you for being here today. Right on. Thank you. Uh, Mark Nelson Denham, still in business? Still in business. We're excited. So we're focusing strictly on the men, 
Uh, we are, we'll have production here again in Knoxville uh, within the next six months. Uh, I've surrounded myself, which we've talked about, with some great people uh, around Knoxville, some advisors and mentors to, you know, I'm, I'm not, this is not immediate. I'm still working on myself. I had, I'm not gonna admit to the day that I don't still have ghosts and demons, uh, but having people around me that, you know, keep me on the right path and, and, and it might stay in my ear. Uh, uh, and so I'm looking forward to uh, building this business and uh, uh, getting back on track. Alan. What do you want to say to the community? Uh, I'm sorry, A, and uh, thank you for embracing me. I, I'm been very fortunate and blessed that to come home to uh, open arms. I mean, people hadn't given up on me and, uh, and uh, I want to prove them right this time. Thank you. Uh, it's pretty courageous for you to sit here again and, and to and to speak your truth and and to, you know, for you to be in that dynamic conversation with God. And the beautiful thing about God is um, he's dealt with a few rascals <laughs> in his day. I'm one of them. I heard that and so I, I, he, he argues well. <laughs> thank you, bro. But but thank you for being courageous and, and willing to sit and, and tell your story. And and here's to a life of possibility going forward one in which you shine. Right on, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We'll see you next time on Anything is Possible.